Hi all. Good morning. So here I'm back again, and today in this small video, we'll uh, discuss about how to set up NAS in NAV two hundred sixteen, and uh, what has been changed with respect to NAS from NAV two hundred fifteen. I know most of us know how to set it up till twenty fifteen, uh, but there are certain changes in the configuration of N NAS in Microsoft Dynamics Lab twenty sixteen. I hope everybody uh, who's watching this video know <coughs> why we need to set up NAS. So NAS is uh, set it up to run some automatic jobs, which are uh, which we configure at the job queues, and using NAS those uh, batch are can be scheduled and run automatically. So let's see um, how to set it up. So for the best practices, I would suggest uh, to have a separate service tier for NAS so let's open Microsoft Dynamics Lab Administration and create a new service just for NAS so as I click and add an instance I need to nav it, uh, name it let's say NAS service uh, I I'm using the port number 7745 77 let's say 46 7, 7, 7, 7, I hope uh, everybody know why we need to set all these and then there is a login account for the demo I'm using the network service account but uh, uh, for the production environment I would select I would suggest to use a user account which is a domain user account and uh, have expiration policy for the password set to never expire and have certain permissions on the SQL server as well as on the Navigent database so it'll take a while to set it up the Navigent service tier, and once uh, the uh, service is up, uh, we can configure it for NAS. So let's wait for a while. So the system were able to create the new service which we just configured, which is NAS service. So let's uh, try to edit and change the setting as per our requirement. So for NAS, now we have a separate tab at the service tier once you expand this tab uh, there are certain parameter and with this console uh, Microsoft has provided the uh, help for each and every parameter which you select uh, the new parameter which is added which is run NAS service with admin so uh, when the administrator rights will be given to the service uh, when it is executing now let's come to the right hand side of the panel where there are certain changes uh, till NAV 2015 we, we used to set up job queue uh, on the startup argument and then uh, we used to have uh, startup code unit as one which used to uh, run the NAS startup function uh, I'm setting up it to 450 exp I'll explain it why uh, or later and then there's a startup method which either you can keep blank which I, I'll be going to do it and start NAS so then it calls a particular method on the NAS startup code unit. Once all this set up, I'll save the service. Okay. And to implement changes, what I'll do is I'll restart both, which is my uh, Navigation service as well as the NAS service, just to make sure that things get updated. Uh, as they get restarted, I'll start the Navigation client and we will see uh, where we can set it up the service to run automatically which uh, the task which I schedule so as the service are now running I'll open my uh, Windows client so uh, till the Windows client pop up uh, I hope everybody knows what are job queues and job queue are the places in uh, are the pla is the place in Navigent where we can set up a code unit or a report to run automatically at a scheduled time. We can even uh, schedule on which weekday it should run, at what frequency it should run, and at the same time, uh, it gives us uh, the log entries. Uh, so it gives us a success message or a failure message with an error message that this job didn't execute at this particular moment of time and all those capabilities are there in the standard product uh, using job queue so 
so my nitrogen client is now popped up uh, let's go up to the job queue let's search for it so this is my job queue menu so uh, let's go to the job queues it's the first on the list so this is my job queue window uh, where you you can see multiple job queues and then you have uh, started start automatically from NAS and running with user ID so uh, with the job queue there is an option that you can uh, run it manually but uh, th then it will not be scheduled automatically and it will execute the jobs which are under this job queue so uh, if you want to schedule it uh, via NES I'll just edit this job let's say notify the standard Microsoft job and so uh, when we want to run it automatically via NAS there is a separate tab for it which is NAS setting which says start automatically from NAS once you click on this you need to select the service on which it should run so I can see my two services I'll select the NAS service which I created and I can click OK press done any service which is configured via NAS filter it out from here also you cannot start or stop that because that is configured by NAS so it'll take a while to uh, get the configuration uh, and start this and then till then let's have a look on what else there is in the job queue so now in the job queue you have a category list which is just a name and a description uh, for the categories with this categories, uh, this category is actually filtering job queue and job queue entries where we actually schedule the object which need to be run. So let's see uh, the one which is running the R is uh, notify entry dispatcher. So if I edit on this, uh, I can see that it will run a code unit which is 1509 and uh, which will be fall under a category of mail notify will run on every day will have no start and end time and will run in every one minute okay and then how many times it should try and if you want to have an end date for the particular job you can set it up now this mail notify is actually also being configured here on the job queues it says mail notify so it'll actually filter it out and then run all these jobs which fall under this category okay so till the system is taking some time let's have a look what was there in NAP 2015 when we used to configure uh, in the nav service tier as startup code unit as one and startup parameter as uh, uh, startup argument as job queue so uh, this is my uh, code unit one so when I used to configure code unit 1 over there this function used to call which is NAS handler uh, automatically from the NAS service which in by then call a code unit NAS management the function NAS handler so this code unit is actually code unit 44 so this used to call this function and based on the parameter which I passed which is job queue it used to run a uh, code unit which is start now these are the two objects which we use uh, in NEB 2015 for the job queue let's see what happens in NEB 2016 object designer so if I go to code unit 1 and try to search a method which is NAS there's no method with NAS so there's no function for NAS in code unit 1 now that's why we cannot configure the code unit as 1 as well as there is no code unit 44 as you can see here so uh, the we cannot configure code unit uh, 44 so that it takes our parameter so that is the reason why we selected uh, code unit for 450 so if you let's go to the code unit 450 and we didn't specify anything in the method so it'll run the on run this is job queue loop and then um, you know if you read through it then it uh, filter out for uh, which are run automatically and then it runs them uh, let's see what happened here I might need to uh, select the server again if 
before doing that let's have a look on the job view log entries are there anything uh, there are no jobs yet so nothing has been executed so let's re let me restart my client okay so it takes some time to configure so the, the restart should do the magic so I hope now you get the idea why we uh, left this parameter as blank and why we set it up as 450 uh, so my client has now restarted let's have a look on the job queue So I did uh, two three time update status over here and with that it uh, get hold of the service which is uh, configured which is NAS service and as I configured the network service account is showing me the network service account now this should uh, run my job queue entry uh, specific to that particular filter which is uh, nil notify for the job category filter which you are running so let's have a look on the job queue log, log entries and see we have this code unit executed with a with a start time at 1227 and end time at that and this will run and after every one minute so then the system will uh, check the next time when it should run from the job queue entry so it should be after one minute and it shows you when it should start the early start date and as the time passes by one minute is over it runs it automatically so you can check the log entries here also uh, by the selected job so this is how we can configure uh, if you see uh, there are only two options uh, to configure a job queue which is either a code unit or a report so you can configure these two objects and then it runs at the background uh, without a user in intervention and as soon as it runs so see uh, it run for the next time also which is at uh, 28 so it runs automatically without any user intervention and you get your task done which you want to schedule at daily basis uh, hope the video help you in and you'll be able to set up job queue if you have any questions you can put it on the comment sections and if you still want to use the parameterized job queue stay connected I'll I'll either have a video or a blog post which I'll put on around the comment section uh, or the description section of the video thank you hope you like the video please do comment and share the video thank you see you next time